Hello, good morning, and uh, thank you for joining me. I know my light is kind of bright. Let me straighten up my collar a little bit. Uh, we're about to have a live session uh, with yours truly and Dr. Anthony Ratkovic. Hi, Gaynao, good morning. Let me invite some people. I'm glad you guys are interested in seeing our my videos. Um, I'm inviting the uh, the people that they suggest uh, for the videos are the people who watch your videos the most, who are most likely to watch. Um, Dr. Anthony, uh, Dr. Tony is on the way. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Gaynell. Thank you for joining. Uh, Good morning, Clint. How you doing, brother? I'm just trying to find a uh, a good uh, trying to find a good place to put my my light here and my beauty ring, and uh, a place that uh, won't be too intrusive. Let me see here. What's up, Maurice? How you doing, brother? We're getting ready to get down. We're getting ready to have a session of uh, biomagnetism and uh, and brain training. Just trying to get the camera right. Trying to get the mic. I hope I sound pretty good on the mic. What's up, man? Knowledge is power. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Thank you. So here we are um, at the Biomed RX Health Center. Let me shine a little bit more light on the situation. Ta-da! And here we are. Okay, uh, Dr. Tony is going to be here in a minute. So I use this tape when I'm treating myself with uh, biomagnetic paratherapy because that way it keeps the magnets on the table. And uh, if I squirm around, okay, so you have to excuse the slight mess here in my office. All right. And I'm going to get my um, brain training device. I'll be right back. Now, this is not just because I'm thirsty. Uh, <laughs> yes, okay, I can train your brain, <laughs> no problem. Now, this is very important, okay? Whenever you have biomagnetic pair therapy, it's important to be well hydrated. It's important not only for the patient to be well hydrated, but also for the practitioner. It's also important for me to be hydrated. When your blood is acidic, meaning when um, the pH of your blood is too low, right? Uh, good to see, good to hear, Clint. Um, <laughs> all right, Maurice. 
uh, when the pH of your blood is too low, right, your blood cells stick to each other to protect themselves. It looks like, uh, like these magnets, okay? Your red blood cells tend to stack up like, uh, like this, like these magnets, right? That's in order to protect themselves, okay? They're not supposed to be stacked up in cookie stacks like this. They're supposed to be all negatively charged and uh, by being negatively charged, by having like polarity, um, they're supposed to repel, okay? If you can notice uh, these refrigerator magnets, if I put negative to negative, they'll repel, right? Like poles repel. And that's the way your red blood cells are supposed to look. They're supposed to be bouncing against each other. When your red blood cells are not stuck together like this, they're able to flow more freely. This enables your white blood cells to grow to their proper size. White blood cells are supposed to be three times the size of red blood cells so that they can travel around your body and clear out your toxins and de you know, detoxify you and get rid of all of the pathogens. When I say pathogens, I mean virus, bacteria, fungus, and parasites, and I also mean heavy metal toxin burdens, okay? So what we're gonna do here, what we do here at the Biometrics Health Center is we use biomagnetic pair therapy, okay, to help your body get rid of pH imbalances. There are two things that go on in the body. Uh, when you have a virus, for example, uh, let's just say, for example, you have the early stages of HIV, right? I'm going to go there because people don't believe that we can uh, rid the body of HIV, and we actually can, um, and I've done it here, okay? Um, HIV primarily lives in the large intestine, in the uh, colon, okay? Um, it makes the colon acidic. It brings down the pH. It uses the colon as a reservoir. And that makes the colon acidic. It brings down the pH, makes the pH very low, okay? Before your body catches the disease, before it actually becomes full-blown AIDS, uh, while you're still a carrier, it's holding on to your body, usually by means of the E. coli bacteria. Now, we all have some E. coli in our body, and we all do need to have some E. coli in our body. However, if you uh, eat and... Um, fast food restaurants, or really any restaurants, like, you know, really, um, there's a chance that you could pick up an excessive amount of E. coli bacteria in the body. And E. coli resides primarily right here in the middle of the chest, in the thymus gland, okay? So, uh, in those cases, being that um, HIV is a... Uh, The phone always rings when I'm trying to go live. Um, when you have a serious case, a serious disease such as HIV, right? Uh, AIDS is a deadly disease. Okay, we're gonna pull out the big strong magnets, okay? We have lots of different magnets that we use for uh, biomagnetic pair therapy, okay? For example, I'll give you some breakdown of uh, what I use for therapy here, okay? These are little magnets. They're marked red on the positive side and black on the uh, negative side, right? Opposites attract, likes repel, right? Okay, positive and negative. These magnets we would use on your face, on the eyes, on children, okay? And they're made of ferrite, which is what we normally know of uh, as magnets, the black magnets, right? The black metal uh, ferrite, okay? It's actually not metal, it's uh, uh, ceramic, right? 
And then we have a little bit bigger magnets, right? Red and black, okay? All right. Hi, Susan Cantrell. Hello, thanks for joining. All right. And we have these magnets, okay? Now, these magnets, are they're more powerful than they look, okay? Likes repel, opposites attract, all right? I would use these magnets, say, here on the wrist, right? Okay? Because uh, this is a high flow area. You can see my veins here. Um, you see where there's a lot of flow, a lot of blood flow, okay? When the blood passes beneath the magnetic field of a magnet, okay, the magnet polarizes the iron in your blood. You have iron in your blood. This is why your blood is red. It's got ferrite in it, ferrous in it. Um, and the hydrogen in the blood gets polarized. Remember when you were in school and in science, you would take a cardboard, a piece of cardboard, and you would put a magnet underneath the cardboard. And then if there were iron filings on the top of the cardboard, they would all line up. They would all line up along the lines of flux, the magnetic lines of flux coming from the magnet. That's polarization. The magnet is now polarizing the metals. And when you have magnets on your body, right, when your blood passes through a magnetic field, all of those red blood cells that are stuck together, they become polarized by the magnet and they unstick from each other. And they become recharged, recharged with the negative uh, charge that they, that they need. Let me give you a tip. And I always do this. I always go to the beach and I always show and talk about the importance of walking on the beach. Okay. It is important for you to walk on the ground or the grass, more importantly, on the grass every day. The planet Earth has a negative magnetic field, and that negative magnetic field is very, very good for your health. It's also very good for depolarizing uh, the, the stuck blood cells in your body. Lay down on the grass. Look at the sky. But most importantly, try to make it to the beach. What increases the magnetic field of the Earth is friction. This is the reason why the magnetic field of the Earth is more powerful at or near the equator than it is here, and it's less powerful in Canada or toward the North Pole. The planet Earth is not a perfectly round sphere. The planet Earth is an ellipse. Because the Earth is rotating, it's kind of mashed down like a pancake. It's wider at the equator than it is tall top to bottom from the poles. And underneath the crust of the Earth, at the equator, there is much more motion and activity going on in the magma that's underground, that's in the in the center of the earth. Okay, there's much more, there's iron and all kind of stuff just moving around down there. And sometimes it comes bursting out in the form of a volcano, right? Now, uh, this is why biomagnetic pair therapy takes less time to perform, uh, less time to take for the magnets to take effect uh, near the equator than it does here. Here, at this distance from the equator, once we place the magnets in place, um, it takes about 30 minutes, uh, 35 minutes. I've tried to leave it on 45 minutes to an hour uh, for the magnets to take place, to, for the magnetic uh, 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 field to take effect. Um, I was talking about magnets first. Let's get back on the subject. These magnets are more powerful, right? These are rare earth magnets. These magnets are made of neodymium, okay? These magnets are from Spain. And uh, they're kind of expensive, but I highly recommend that you get yourself a set of therapy magnets, okay? Once you get a pair, a set of therapy magnets, it'll cost about two, $300. It's, it's more important than anything else that you would keep in your medicine cabinet. And Dr. Tony is here, uh, Dr. Anthony Rakovic. Good morning, sir. How are you? Welcome. Fine, fine. Glad to see you. Yes, no problem. No problem. 
I already started a live video, and we've already got an audience speaking up here. You are on fire, my friend. You know it. And uh, what was I saying? So what you want to do to help yourself is at least once a week, if you live near the beach, if you live, you know, like, like my friends here in California, uh, uh, like you, Maurice, okay, <laughs> uh, try to make it to the beach. Try to walk on the wet sand. Try to walk where the, uh, the, the, the water is slapping the, uh, the, the shore, all right? Try to walk on that soggy sand because with the motion of the tide coming in and the waves coming in and going, there's a lot of friction beneath your feet. So the magnetic field of the earth is very, very strong there. The negative magnetic field of the earth is very strong. So it's very important to ground yourself there. And you will feel better. I mean, I take my son to the beach. Um, we try to go every weekend, but we don't always make it every weekend. But I try to go pretty frequently with him. And um, I feel 100% better after just sitting in that soggy, wet sand. And uh, I use the excuse of making a a sandcastle, all right, uh, to, to, to actually give myself something to do. But what I'm really trying to do is I'm trying to ground myself. And it's very important to do that, especially for us therapists, because when you're using the magnets, you're also using your own magnetic energy. This is why it's important for me to be hydrated, um, as well as for the, the, the patient to be hydrated before the session. When your red blood cells finally become unstuck from each other, it's like, it's like opening a sponge. I have to take this one. This is Devin. May I help you? Mm, no. Thank you. Okay. Where do you want me, sir? Oh, uh, I'm ready to go when you're ready to go. You're right. Ready to go. Yeah, I'm ready to go right ready here. Right next to you. Go yeah. ahead. Let's do it right here. Right next to you. you yeah, please. Yeah. Right there. Come you're on. Same, not your same height because you're taller than me, but. Well, then you hit the chair. Here. It'll come up. All right. Let's see here. There you go. Let's get this party started. All right. Well, you know what's going on. You know how the thing works. Of course. I've seen all your shows. You're on my Wi-Fi already, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, from cool. before, yeah. You want to plug into the wall? Oh, um, no. I'm good. You cool? I'm good. All Simple. right. Good to hey, see you, Hey, Mr. Doctor. Devin. How all are right. you? Very well. You already shows ready to start from one to this Crooked Spine show on my show. My biggest thing with yours, and just to get started, I jump right into stuff, too. I watched a couple of videos that you've done before, too. Phenomenal work. Thank you. Phenomenal work. Thank you. A lot of it is you've interviewed specialists in this field that prove to me it's a science. It is. It's been proven to be a science. Yes, insurance yes. companies don't pay for it. I, I'll give you that for one, too. <laughs> it's a science that helps detoxify what I look to paraphrase for me, detoxify the body with biomagnetism yes. and retrain the brain, heal the brain to make sure it's working well with the neurofeedback. Absolutely. Okay. I want to jump right into neurofeedback. That's, okay. that's my interest, per se, looking at the videos and what you've done in the past, too. Really... I look at it, okay, if someone has brain injuries, and it can be general, like, for example, ADHD or autism. Okay. It could be a brain injury from physical trauma, um, such Traumatic as brain injury. Yes. brain injury for one, two, sports for one, two, or car accident for one, two. It can be emotional injuries to the brain, yes. um, okay. such as a traumatic event, um, watching someone die, for yes. example, something like that, or something that hits you where it sets an imprint on your brain. And my understanding is that when it does those things, either of those things, or all those things, it changes frequency or the hertz of the brain, which is a way to measure brain waves. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. What happens is okay. every time we have, let's take it from the emotional Good. trauma, right? Good. Yes. Um, every time you have a shock, uh, you open a $700 phone bill or uh, the guys that go to war and they see their buddies getting PS blown up. PTSD. Right. Right, right. You get, you get. Uh, it's, it's actually dysregulation. A little kink forms Good. in the neocortex. The neocortex is the newest area of the brain. That's why it's called neo. It's the outermost cortex, the outermost shell. Uh, when we say cortex, think of it uh, along its root word, cork. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Cork in Spanish is cortejo. 
all right, uh, cortejo, and, and it's the same word, it's a cortex, right, the, the outer shell. The neocortex is the wrinkly part on the outside of the brain. And if you have trauma or intense emotion or serious boredom, you're gonna get little kinks in the neocortex. That's called dysregulation. That means that your neocortex is dysregulated and it, it, it makes it difficult for blood to flow in the brain. And it also makes it difficult and almost impossible for you to achieve an alpha state. What's an alpha state? An alpha state is uh, we have several uh, frequency bands yep. for brainwave activity. So we'll take it from low to high. Delta is zero to five hertz approximately. Okay. And that's when you're in deep sleep, yeah. right? Okay. Theta is around six, seven, eight hertz, right? And that is the frequency that of uh, light sleep or dream sleep, REM sleep, or what we call the subconscious mind. Theta is a very important frequency band. So if that's those two, delta and theta, we can still relax and heal, correct? Yes, those okay. are those are when you're asleep. Those okay. are th okay. those are your two sleep frequencies. When you first go to sleep and you're dreaming, you're in theta, and then when you're in deep sleep, where you're no longer dreaming, you're in delta that sleep, and that's the very restorative sleep that you get all night. Now, right above that is 10 hertz, around 11, 10, 10 11, 12. That's the alpha zone. Okay. Right? okay. So that's where we are now, and that's where you are when you're a child, just relaxed and awake and happy. That's so the happy conscious, zone. Conscious and a conscious state. Conscious state. Okay. Okay. Conscious state and very relaxed. And when you're, uh, uh, and then above that, we're going to keep going through the frequencies. Yeah. Let's go through uh, ranges. Uh, above that, you're going to find uh, beta. Beta is around 12, uh, I mean, 10 hertz. Uh, 10 to 12 hertz, that's, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, excuse me, beta is near 20 hertz. And that's like if you're listening to me right now, okay? If you're listening attentively to a speech or to a professor or something, yep. you're in a beta state because you're, you're, you're paying attention. Then you get up to high beta, which is around 25 hertz. And high beta is like at the moment when you're trying to solve a math problem when you really are thinking, right? You're concentrating on something. Got it, okay. And, uh, and then above that, above 30 hertz is the gamma state. Okay. And uh, gamma state, is, it's, uh, it's very uh, interesting because when you get above, as you rise up in the levels of cortical arousal, right? From right. delta to theta to alpha to beta mm -hmm. to high beta, you have an, an, a, a, a um, all a, a, co a coordinated increase in physical arousal as well, physical tension. But when you get above the 30 hertz range, the body relaxes and the brain goes super fast when you're in gamma. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And the meditators, the uh, the monks, the people who are very experienced mm -hmm. in meditation, they achieve that gamma state because their mind, when, it, when you're very intense and very uh, versed in meditation, your mind goes into a very high frequency state and the body goes very low and relaxed. And we're gonna get into gamma down the road because gamma training is what I do every day and that's kind of kind of higher level brain hacking type of stuff. But when you are- uh, What's just, a good state to be in? Alpha. Alpha is a good alpha, happy what's the range state. again of alpha? Between 10 to 13 hertz, and, right? And Eight to, nine, to, 9 to 13 hertz. And just thinking about it too, the range you're talking about, when we can get into a range and maintain that a certain period of time, if our body's staying healthy in that range, at that point we're not going to have the conditions we have now, ADHD, um, autism, uh, not, not autism per se, because that's more mm -hmm. in general, but more of anxiety, depression, even medical conditions that are more chronic illnesses when people don't realize, okay, how do I, that's why I talk about doing yoga, meditation, because it gets you into a relaxed state, the 10 to 13 range, yes. and maintain that, because if, if and I'm, in my sense, looking at the big picture, if someone drives to work every day, they spend eight hours in an office, go, 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 they come home, spend maybe an hour in traffic both ways, if it's on a Friday afternoon, because yeah. Friday afternoon goes crazy, at least two hours. At that point, their body is in that excited state the whole time. You're in high, high beta. High beta. So that's it's be very about stressful. The, about 20? 20, 25. 25. I'm trying to pay attention here. Yes. I'm trying, I'm trying yes. to stay in high yes. beta myself. Yes. So at that point, if you're there, how do you get your body to get to a lower 10 to 13 hertz to where your body can actually recharge, recover? Then when you go to sleep, get down to 7, 8 hertz, what you're saying about the delta and theta, 
that range so your body can recover and recharge? Well, that's a very good question. And um, meditation is a good way to do it, but I'm going to talk very honestly about human nature. Yes. Okay. You can instantly, humans, 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 right, right. You can instantly achieve uh, the, 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 the um, alpha state uh, with alcohol, okay, especially wine. Wine does put you into the alpha state. And alpha state is what range again? Around 10 hertz. Yes, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So it gets and, to a relaxed state. And, 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 and this is why after you've been driving for a few hours, you go, oh, I need a beer or I and need a glass of wine. not while you're driving, people. Yes, not it's while legal. you're driving. In California. And, and, and that's why. I mean, this is a brain shop, so there's no yeah. judgment. But this is, these are just the things that people do to achieve the alpha state, especially when, this, when the cerebral cortex is dysregulated. And well, we've um, talked about even like taking CBD oil or even even yes. um, doing not maybe vape or also smoking marijuana. Marijuana, absolutely. Like Ma so marijuana produces exactly marijuana and not all alcohol. Okay, I wouldn't suggest gin. Okay, why not? Uh, well, because people, people like gin. Yeah, they do. Uh, people like to fight. Oh, rocks. Yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> wine, beer, marijuana. Uh, those three tend to put a person really uh, immediately into an alpha state. And I see someone probably online going, I should probably comment yes, but people find out that I do it a lot, so right. they'll hold off on it. Why is that a bad thing, though? Because different areas of the brain actually respond better to different frequencies, okay? okay. The frontal lobe is, your low, is the area of... Um, executive control and inhibitory control. Conscious. The frontal lobe is telling you what to do and also, more importantly, what not to do. The parietal lobe and the occipital lobe mm -hmm. are more associated with emotions. The parietal lobe responds very well to um, alcohol and to drugs because when you are, because it's your emotion center, you're accumulating dysregulation through your intense uh, emotions. Mm -hmm. And so you most people have dysregulatory patterns toward the back of the brain, right? When the soldiers come back from war, they also have dysregulation in the frontal lobe because they've been in a period of hypervigilance. They've been sleeping with one eye open and looking over their mm -hmm. shoulder and very scared. So the, the, the frontal lobe also with, with war PTSD, collects dysregulation. So it has changed per se over a period of time. If they've been gone for say a full tour of four years, even less than that too, you can change your frontal parietal lobe and on your, your back lobe, what's the back lobe, cortisol? The, 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 the parietal, parietal and then, and then, and then occipital. The occipital, occipital mm -hmm. lobe. At that point, your body will adjust to your environment. Oh, absolutely. It has to. So over time, if you've adjusted your environment, now you're doing other things to negate that stress on your body to cause things to, if you want to call it, get back to better hurts back to healthier state, how does that affect you long term? Well, you, you, you're, you're going to destroy relationships because mm -hmm. you're going to still be at war mm -hmm. in your brain. You're going you're gonna to still be in a combative mode because you've already adjusted yourself to that wartime stance. You're, you're in more of a tense state all the exactly. time. Exactly. So not only has your frontal lobe changed where your cognitive and rational, I call it the rational ability to organize things and make rational decisions not, versus now you've now it's been controlled by both areas in a more emotional state where you respond right away. Someone yells at you, you punch them in the face. You're reactionary. Yeah, I would tase them because I don't like to punch people. I'll tase them instead. <laughs> That'd be my response. And and that's the issue, right? So so well, what we do here is uh, we train away that dysregulation. We train it. We massage it away. We allow you to train it away so that you can become a a whole and more relaxed person. And you can kind of regain the neocortex you had when you were a child. You can regain your joy and uh, your happiness. You can reaccess that alpha state without needing drugs, without needing... That's the biggest you know, thing what I was going to get into, too, is really everything that Devin's talking about is non-evasive. Right. There are no side effects. If it doesn't, for some reason, it doesn't work, it just doesn't work. There's no side effect of having, for example, chiropractic. There's a higher risk of chiropractic causing a problem than Devin's therapist. So a lot of it is give yourself the opportunity to realize, okay, if I'm in this state, I've been told by my psychologist, my psychiatrist, my medical doctor, I need these medications for this. At that point, what can I do that's non-invasive if I have had PTSD, that have emotional issues, I have, if I am an alcoholic, I've been drinking too much, I'm seeing now 
and a clear picture, maybe not too clear, that now my relationships around me are being affected. Right. My temperament's different. Okay, can I see, can I get neurofeedback done to get my body, my brain actually, your brain, to readjust back to a better, healthier state? Then I can change my habits easier. At that point, then I can do things to get my body to change in the long run by changing the stressors around me, by maybe not drinking or or smoking marijuana or doing other things too to bring that to, to healthier state. And prescription drugs as well. And you, prescription you, drugs you, also. You, you, and you can end your dependency on prescription drugs. That's um, huge. That's, yes. that's, I, I, I talk about that, Devin. This is my, the, this, the chiropractic soapbox is we're a natural healing therapy, just like yourself too. Yes. So you don't need medication. The problem with medication is that 400 people die a day. 400 people die a day. So medication is the correct way. That's just the fact. And become non-statistic, at that point, can you do something for your own health versus paying the $10, $50 copay every time you have to go for, uh, fill up your drugs to make sure you don't need that by doing something healthy for short-term and long-term? These drugs are very toxic to your liver. These Please. prescription drugs are very, very destructive to your liver and to your overall health. If you read, if you read I'm going to cut you yes. off again. If yes. you read, if you talk to your pharmacist or read the, 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 the information they give you when they give you the drugs, those three, four, five pages, it tells you all of that. Anything that you take for medications has metals in there. It goes mm -hmm. right to your liver, your kidneys, your, your colon, and your sigma colon, your appendix, to cause things to become more toxic. It does not get filtered out through your normal digestive system as it would foods, minerals, and vitamins. And we have ways to help you with that as well. Yeah. Uh, bentonite clay is a very good way to remove these heavy metal toxins from your body. Uh, but before we get yeah, on to exactly, that, yeah. we're going to we're gonna uh, talk about how neurofeedback you talk about the actually emotional works, state, right? the, the okay. emotional okay. states. Um, we place Good. probes on your brain. No. Okay. Let's get back Not to on the your brain. frequencies. On your brain. Uh, on your scalp, right? On your scalp. Got it. And, and we're reading the, the, the brain head. activity beneath where the probes are. Okay? How does it do that? Electricity? It's uh, Yes. These are very, very sensitive amplifiers. It works on mm -hmm. the same principle as an electrocardiograph, Earth. except it's an electroencephalograph. Mm -hmm. uh, it's probably 10 to 100 times more sensitive than an EKG. And uh, the it's, it's very sensitive. I mean, if you blink, the, the muscle uh, t uh, mo activity of your eyelids would actually affect your signals. Well, realize, go, take it a step back to your body works on, on electrical current in millivolts. So when it does that, it's very, it's when you have sense equipment like, like Devin does too, allows you to read all of that together. So it coordinates the encephalograph, the whole scalp and the whole cortical cortex. At that point, it tells exactly what's going on. And by putting the, the, the position in the right way too, allows you to sense what's going on in a proper way or improper way. Yes. The location is important because we know that the parietal lobe and the occipital lobe collect a lot of dysregulation as uh, in response to your emotional trauma. So we definitely train you here. So it's more sensitive. More sensitive. Oh. And we train you in the frontal lobe because we know that that's really your executive and inhibitory control. Now, what I was saying before about sure. alcohol and drugs is that um, your parietal lobe is going to be more responsive to the, to the alpha frequency. The frontal lobe, your lobe of inhibitory and executive control, is more responsive to higher frequencies because this is where your beta thinking takes place. What's beta thinking? Beta frequency is uh, 20 to 25 hertz. Got it, got it. Right? Yeah. When you're paying attention so you're or trying to yeah. solve problems got or it. trying to drive your car or, or trying to do anything that requires conscious thought. Good. So when you have a glass of wine, for example, you feel good. You feel happy because the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, has the 10 hertz alpha frequency that it wants. Got it. But that frequency is a little bit too low for the frontal lobe that's in charge of inhibitory control. So you feel happy and you open your mouth and you say things you would not have said had you not been drinking. Dang it. Yes. And that goes the same way for uh, marijuana, except not necessarily in the same way. You don't become as loud as people who drink beer, for example, but uh, you're slower because the executive control is not there. So you're slurring your words, you're kind of looking stupid and acting a little doofusy. And, and that's because the 10 hertz, the, 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 what's causing that frequency is in your bloodstream. 
and it's affecting your entire brain. So even though you're in a relaxed state over here, and now your now your ability to react or be responsive to other people becomes more of a slower. Exactly. Is that considered a lower hertz or a higher hertz? Well, actually, it's 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 getting too low of a frequency. Like more of a seven or eight versus a ten. Mm -hmm. Got got it. Okay. And 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 so and so you don't have the inhibitory control or the executive control. But you feel as though you do because you're happy with the parietal so your load. perception is not your reality. In other words, you think you can drive, but you actually cannot drive. So don't mm -hmm. drink and drive. Or smoke. Or smoke and drive, actually. Drive. Or, no, or no. do crack and drive. I don't know. Do any drugs and drive. Any drugs and drive. Yeah. Please. Yeah. And, Please. And, and so the thing is, what you want is for the brain to be back at its natural state. So that you don't have to take any drugs, so that you don't have to take any type of medication. And it, and and go back to that too. When you go off of those, when you're not taking those drugs, and then how does your brain and your your emotional response and physical response drop when you stop taking those drugs and the alcohol? Say, for example, the next day after a hangover. Oh, it gets or worse. Smoking too much. Yeah, you 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 because the alcohol and the drugs actually cause more dysregulation. Mm. And so, you know, now you've got a hangover. Now you feel worse than if you had not had any alcohol. And, um, and that's a physical response. That's a physical correct? response. That's a physical toxic yeah. response. Physical toxin response. Okay. And, okay. And, and the more you do it, then the more your dependency on the chemical uh, becomes and you why? become an addict. Why does it become dependent? Well, I know why, but they might know because these are not NASA, JPL, astronaut scientists <laughs> out there. Sometimes. You have are. a physical dependency because, yeah. because the body, your body chemistry changes, okay? Your liver and uh, your in, uh, endocrine system uh, is altered by the presence of the chemical in your body. And you also have an emotional and psychological dependency on it uh -huh. because that is, you know, your, your brain remembers and your brain remembers when and how you felt happy and you desire to feel happy all the time, so you're gonna to wanna to get high all the time. And one thing too, I tell my patients that things will self-regulate. So if, instead of taking doing a normal thing to keep, keep yourself happy, you, now your body's required this drug to stay happy, you go, great, we're just gonna use that drug all the time. Right. It may be a drug, and a medication, maybe may be alcohol, may be smoking marijuana, you're using something else to, to, re, to re regulate your body, it, it'll body will adjust. But it does. That's what causes dependence, like you mentioned, dependence. to make your body want to want that to maintain that state of mind. Yes. Right. At that point, it, it's okay doing it. Short term, it's okay with the state of mind because that's an emotional response. But long term, doesn't worry about the long term toxic effect on your body. And don't you want to be free? I mean, we all want yeah. to be free. You know that we're we're just simple uh, living. Simple living. We're we, uh, you know Lent was just uh, yeah. up until. Uh, Yesterday, a couple yeah. of days ago, yeah, yeah, a couple of days ago, yeah, a couple of days ago. and uh, that's a beautiful thing once a year to take forty days. And you know, the Muslims celebrate uh, Ramadan, kind of a similar premise: sacrifice and um, do without, especially those toxins. Cleanse your body and get back to the state where you can live without it. That's or at least said. remind yourself. You said 40 days too, where it takes at least 30 days to detoxify your body, change your body's self-regulating system, going back to the science part, because that's what I like the science part. Yes. At that point, your body can readjust in 30 to 40 days, 30 days minimum, back to a normal, healthier state, or in a shorter period of time, go to an unhealthy state. So whatever you're gonna do, give yourself time to adjust to a new treatment, a new therapy. At that point, give yourself time to realize it's not going to feel good. It's going to suck sometimes too. Yes. When you do that, okay, what am I going to? What's going to take? Even if you're working out too with a trainer, people love to join gym in January, right? They're mm -hmm. January addicts for one too. Problem is, you only have two weeks to get those 40 pounds off and start looking like a like a a, a beach model again. They don't give themselves the three months, the four months, the five months they need to really get their body to adjust, self-regulate again, get back to your better state. At that point, your body sees that as normal and maintains that normality. And it takes four months before summer's going to be yeah. here anyway, so you yeah. might as well stick it out from because, January to <laughs> January April, yeah. April, because it's you know the uh, the same principle. Um, we have an expression in in brain training: shift happens, right? Mm -hmm. um, we require you to do a minimum of twenty sessions of neurofeedback before you can see a an appreciable effect. 
when you measure it, and what, what Devin showed me last time too, I was here, is you measure it on a computer. At that point, you know a baseline where you are, and you see the improvement incrementally, but you're not going to get the effect where you can maintain that and maintain that state until that 20 visits is up. Exactly. 20 sessions is up. Exactly. And it's best if you can do those sessions in close interval. Mm -hmm. right before the brain has a chance to return to an unhealthy state the brain is very elastic it is going to try to snap back even if it's snapping back to a state of unhealthiness so you want to hit it and hit it and hit it with your sessions close together at least two three four sessions a week i will be open seven days a week in order to right. help my clients achieve yeah. A shift even on the Sabbath even on the Sabbath even on the Sabbath if if you are dedicated to getting a shift I will come in and open up for you so that you can do your your sessions as close together as possible and provoke a shift well it makes sense because you're like like working out right we're not gonna work out once a week and expect a change in your body it's not right. gonna happen the brain responds to repetitive training just like the body like the body except when you stop training your body, your body will go back, your muscles will go back to a flabby and unhealthy state, but the brain learns. That's the beautiful part about it. This is why your college degree is good for the rest of your life. It doesn't wear out, even yeah. though you probably forgot a lot of the yeah. things you learned to get your degree after 20 years past, yeah. you still have that degree because the brain learns. And Well, you're fixing the brain. You're fixing You're, you're not putting a band on, you're fixing right. it. And when you fix it, we talked about the hertz frequency earlier too. How does the hertz frequency change when you fix the brain? Well, you actually come back to uh, the state that you were um, born with, right? Mm -hmm. When when you were a kid, you didn't you didn't need a beer or a glass of wine or a joint. Actually, those things were nasty and distasteful for you because your brain was already the way God made it. Your brain was perfect. In, in your in your perfection life tends to beat you up a little bit and uh we pick up bad habits welcome as to we america yeah yeah, yeah. Welcome, america. welcome to the world really yeah. Yeah. yeah and i think a lot of it is when you when you retrain your brain you get yourself okay now we know what normal is i know when i'm not on normal at that point i may need another session me figure out how to else get back to that normal when you're in an abnormal state all the time that's your normal yes so the problem is you think you're normal but what you're acting and reacting to and what you're doing with your body physically and emotionally and people around you may be more destructive. Right. So again, seeing a, a therapist, seeing a medical doctor being on medications is one way to treat it, yes. But can it fix it? Maybe not. So can you do something on a non-invasive way to actually get your body healed? I, even, I did a, a podcast with a hypnotherapist. Very similar concept. Your brain gets injuries, gets scarred per se in some terms to where you need to fix that scar to heal it so now it can work properly again. Yes. Because it affects that one scar can affect everything, in your, not only in how you think, but your quality of life too. Yes, it can. And when we're training, at the moment we're training you, we have the probes on your scalp, mm -hmm. we're reading the activity beneath, your, beneath the scalp where the probes are located. The patient is watching a movie or playing a video game. When we detect undesirable, stressful brainwave activity, that movie is made blurry temporarily. The clarity of the screen is made blurry. It's the same concept as if you're reading a magazine and someone comes in and flicks the light on and off. Your pupils are going to dilate and constrict, right? You don't tell your eyes to do it. Your brain is connected directly to your it's eyes. It's a reflex. And it's a reflex. Well, if stress as detected by the electroencephalograph, is making the movie blurry and you're interested in watching the movie, the brain is going to do whatever adjustment it has to make in order to keep the movie screen clear. And in that process, we're training away the stress. We're training the brain to work more and more efficiently as time goes on. This is why neural feedback works, and this is why it works so effectively at getting rid of the dysregulation that prevents us from feeling happy without alcohol or drugs. Well, you're gonna, you're gonna figure out what happens is, what I, what I interpret for that is, you're getting a graph of where things are as you're watching the movie or playing a game. Mm -hmm. So at that point, your brain will adapt to that. For example, you're outside in the sun, you're gonna squint your eyes when you first go outside, right? Exactly. Over time, your body will adjust to that by finding ways to adjust for that, dilate your eyes, to allow that, or constrict your eyes, sorry, to, to help filter out some of the lights you can actually see. 
Yes. Same thing when you're driving too. You're gonna do the same thing. So your body knows how to adjust to that. At that point, give it time unconsciously to do that. At that point, your body can can your brain can get adjusted to your overall time. Your body knows it as normal now. But it takes time. That doesn't happen overnight. No, it doesn't. It it, it takes time. It takes discipline. And uh, how long is a session usually? A session is about thirty minutes. Okay. 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 So you know, we hook you up. You will watch thirty minutes if. You want to do longer sessions, and we don't have someone waiting in the hall, then I will allow you to do a longer session. Um, you can bring your own DVD if you want to watch a particular movie that you like, uh, or you can bring any digital copy if you have it on the thumb drive or something. Um, we can actually use the movies wow. that so you, you can bring. use someone else's. Not, it's not a program movie, it's actually a movie of your own, but adjust, adjust how you see the movie based on where the damage or the injured part might be. Right, wow. right, right. Okay. The software will adjust it. And in addition to neural feedback, I want to also discuss CES. Um, we use the Mind Alive devices, okay? And uh, this is the carrying case for the Mind Alive David. And you can find them online uh, at mindalive.com, okay? Um, the president's name is David, Mr. Dave Seaver. And uh, this device incorporates what we call CES. It does this is part of neurofeedback, correct? Well, actually, no. This, this, is, part a, of, okay. th this is an additional got treatment it, it. Okay. That, that makes neurofeedback much more effective. Got it. Okay? And CES therapy, and I'm not going to untangle all of this right now, but I'm just going to show you these two clips here. This is the most significant part. Uh, want, to be your, want to be your Vanna White? Absolutely. Fantastic. Okay, you hook this up, red on the right, okay? Right here. Right on the, on the right earlobe, and black on the left. Okay. Okay. And this device will deliver a very small, mild, calibrated pulse of electricity to the earlobes, which will stimulate the brain to produce serotonin, norepinephrine, epinephrine, and all of your endorphins in perfect balance. What, and, and do they know what endorphins are? Well, endorphins Don't are, <laughs> yeah, can't assume. Endorphins are the juices, so to say, that help hormones, you, hormones yeah. yes, that help the brain to work uh, properly. It's, uh, especially important is serotonin. Serotonin is the happy endorphin. It also has to do with sleep. And most importantly, it has to do with self-esteem. I, I love this topic because a lot of it is when, when you're go ahead, go ahead. Mm -hmm. yep. when, when you're on your endorphins control, go through your blood control, everything in your body to stay in a, in fight or flight or or relax in a relaxed state. Yes. So when your body's in a stress state all the time, you're gonna get the effects of your body changing, such as rapid heart rate, problems breathing, muscle pain, joint pain, you can't sleep, problems even with vision too. So realize your body will change. Versus in a relaxed state, things stay relaxed. We can actually heal, recover, relax, and stay strong. Absolutely. When you are having a conflict, when you're in an argument, for example, the frontal lobe, when you have high stress, your frontal lobe is robbed of serotonin. At that point, you don't have the ability to recognize another person's emotions by their facial expression. So you go into fight or flight mode. You're now having a fight with that person. You are in your emotions and they are in their own emotions and you're not empathizing. You lose the ability to have empathy with the, with other people. Even interpret what they're talking about or what they're saying. I, I never yes. want to get in fight. This guy's huge. I never want to get in fight. <laughs> not be my thing. I, I, would, I would flight versus fight. <laughs> now, I mean, it's very important to regulate your serotonin because mm -hmm. serotonin is largely produced by the pineal gland. Mm -hmm. The pineal gland becomes calcified because we have fluoride in our water and we use toothpaste with fluoride in it. I highly suggest, if you can, stop using fluoridated toothpaste. Stop using toothpaste with fluoride in it. Give your pineal gland a chance to do its job. Um, but CES therapy, what is what else? What's another name for CES therapy? Cranial electrotherapy stimulation. Okay. And if you look up CES therapy online, you're going to find that it's been very, very uh, effective for our troops that are in, in in combat zones. Actually, there's a big push for the Department of Defense to make these devices standard issue for troops that are 
in Afghanistan, Iraq, and other combat areas. So the science does show that it's reliable to help the body heal at least mentally from the brain perspective mm -hmm. because of those PTSD um, syndromes. Yes. So we do this in addition to neurofeedback training because if you balance your endorphins, the, uh, the effects of the neurofeedback are amplified at least sixfold. In the David, I'm turning it on here, you can see it lighting up. Um, we have six energy zones. We have um, I mean, six training, uh, training categories. Energize, like drinking a cup of coffee. Meditate. Brain boost, which is for, um, you know, helping you to learn better or uh, to fix ADD or ADHD, okay? Um, sleep and a mood booster. We can actually make you happy. In fact, let's go to a mood booster here. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to I'm going to start him on mood booster 2. Yes. And then you just press the music uh button, the musical uh symbol button, and you can see it's cranking up, it's starting up. Right? So you can buy online then and, and it's Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay. Yes. You can buy these at mindalive.com and you can also buy them on our website biomedrxsupplements.com. There you go. Okay. And how does this work? I can see it's visual obviously an auditory. So is that going to be what's going to help retrain that serotonin endorphin balance, that hormonal balance in your body? Well, the visual feedback, mm -hmm. you're going to see flashing lights on different sides of the eyes yes, because each, each eye speaks to both uh, hemispheres of the brain. So the left field of vision I'm sorry, your left field of vision speaks to the right side of your brain on both eyes, and your right field of vision speaks to the left hemisphere of the brain so in both eyes. It crosses over. It crosses over. Okay. And um, the, the, the sounds that you're hearing are also different on the left and the right because we're trying to, depending on the setting, we're trying to either calm or excite the brain, the hemispheres of the brain, either left or right. What's regulating your endorphins is when I do this. I'm cranking up on the CES. Now you can see as it gets higher, he's beginning to feel a little tingle of the pulse of electricity coming through the ear clips. Mm -hmm. Right, here, you can here, feel it. Both sides. Both sides, okay. And uh, this is the CES therapy. This is the cranial electrotherapy stimulation, okay? And uh, it's really good. Honestly, people who are getting over an addiction, uh, they tend to wear this. You don't have to wear all of the, 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 the components. You don't have to wear the goggles or the headphones. You can just plug in the ear clips and carry it in your pocket. That's why it's made this way. In fact, when I was on the radio, I would clip it to myself just to keep the edge off. Okay. Yeah, right? you're edgy. Little yeah, edgy yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because you're kind of nervous. You're live. Yeah, stage fright, huh? Yeah, a little stage fright. Nice. So, so, so it's good to have it. It's good to have it. You know, while you're driving, it's good to have it on just the ear clips, right? Uh, at any time, because it's very relaxing, and uh, it makes you feel really good. So, walk me through one time. Why the glasses then, and why the why the the uh, I call it ear call me your buds. What was it called before? The the headphones. Headphones. I forgot. I forgot the term because I've used it for so long. Well, how does that help with the with the CNS? Well, the okay, the the all right. One more time, I, I forgot. Yes, Sorry. the 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 brain training that we get from the uh, goggles and from the headphones really have more to do with the specific frequencies we're trying to achieve in the brain. Got it. Depending on if we want to energize, meditate, uh, brain boost, uh, sleep, or or mood booster, and they change throughout the sequence. Okay, some sequences are as short as seven minutes, and some are 46 minutes long. And, 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 and you'll find variation. You'll find times where the flashing is faster, and then the flashing, the flashing is slower, or uh, the, you'll find that um, there, are, there are transitions and, 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 and the frequencies that you're hearing and that you're seeing. That's brain training. So, Just, so, so, the, so from what we talked about initially the first time, is now you're changing the frequency of the brain yes. by the auditory and visual to make it go to a different mode or different hertz. A different, a different mode. And at the same time, we're stimulating the production of serotonin and other endorphins yeah. 
through yeah. the CES, the exactly. cranial electrotherapy stimulation. And uh, most people, I mean, this is, this is good for peak performance. Uh, I get very, very good responses from elderly clients. I had Mr. Dick Gregory as a client during the last okay. year of his life. And um, he was uh, obviously an elderly gentleman who was suffering cognitive decline. Um, and a lot of people who get Alzheimer's and, and other things as they get older. It's Alzheimer's dementia helps that then. Too. Dementia, oh, that's right. absolutely very, very helpful uh, for, for dementia. Um, it's also good for students. There are a lot of students who get peak performance out of their brain with this device. It's very, very valuable, very, very worth the money to well, get. It makes sense with, with uh, students because they're, they're in that 20, 15 hertz all the time. They're all concentrating the and studying, say, sometimes for eight plus hours mm -hmm. with homework, too. They get drained of that serotonin. So what happens is your cortisol catecholamines creep up your stress hormones to help balance out your body. They take over, causing you to become a stress state. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, that bounce back. Yep. So we are the only neural feedback center that combines, that offers the combination therapy of CES, cranial electrotherapy stimulation, and neural feedback. And, and trust me, um, it's not just for those who are suffering. It's also good to get peak performance out of your brain. Okay? Well, and, and what does it take? So half an hour for the neurofeedback. Do you do this at the same time, obviously. How would, would you do this before or afterwards? How long does it take? I normally do it before. Uh, the session that you would do on the David, this is called the David. The mm -hmm. session you would be doing here would take about 35 to 42 minutes. And based then, on the, based on the mode, based on the session. Based on the session, right. And then afterward, we would immediately go into a 30 minute session with neural feedback. Got it. So you actually get the brain to relax, simulate that serotonin, and then you get the actual brain waves. To change, You're, that's, I don't see it like as two therapies, see it as maybe three or four exponential based on the benefit yes. of when you've done both. Yes. That makes yes. sense why you put them together too. Yes. And the benefit is much greater than the sum of its parts. Mm -hmm. Much greater. And uh, we get a lot, of good, a lot of good feedback. We get a lot of good feedback from um, creatives, okay? Most uh, musicians and artists. That's another thing. That brings us to the topic uh, okay. of, of alpha theta. We What's have alpha theta? And remind me again. I forgot about that. Alpha that theta way. is one of our neural feedback modalities. Got it. Okay. In, in neural feedback, we have three modalities. Infralow, which is to calm the brain down and to get rid as most effective with anxiety, stress, depression, PTSD, autism, ADD, um, bruxism, which is teeth grinding. Uh, eating and sleeping disorders, insomnia, for example, um, addictions, okay? Also, yes. this training is very good for fighting addictions. When you are addicted, the, your, your, the chemistry of your brain has become altered to be dependent upon the chemical of the drugs that you're using. The CES, by balancing your endorphins, makes it to the point where at least that aspect of addiction is no longer present well, then you can actually then you have a chance of fighting right. addiction on a normal healthy state exactly now you have more tolerance for the things that or vices that may want to pull you back into that addiction you may still have the emotional trauma mm -hmm. you may still need to work things out with your therapist exactly. or in group and you may still need to work out the dysregulation with neural feedback but at least the drugs not calling you chemically you're not you, you don't have the monkey on your back, so to speak. You you're not an addictive state. You're more of in a healthier state exactly. to stay away from that addictive state. There's it, a way to it, say these that. These components are necessary for fighting addiction. You have to get you have to get to the emotional root. You have to get rid of the dysregulation in the neocortex, and you definitely have to approach the chemical aspect of addiction in the brain. But once you hit it from all of those uh, simultaneously, you stand the best chance at becoming a healthy person. Well, and it, it beyond it, I'm assuming if you had an emotional trauma to your to your physical body or emotional emotional person too, now you've had those scars in your in your body to remind you that all the time you've learned those scars. Yes. So how do you get that out of your brain so it doesn't become part of your life now versus what happened, say, even a few months ago, five years ago, or 15, 20 years ago? Right. And it's not permanent if you do the right things to change those brain waves, that frequency that hurts, back to a healthier, normal state. 
And that brings us also to alpha theta, right? right. When you are uh, doing neural feedback, we are suppressing the uh, activity in the frequencies that we do not want, but we are pushing up or encouraging activity in the frequencies that we want. And that's called a reward frequency. So mm -hmm. there is okay. a reward frequency. In infralow, the reward frequency is 0 0.01 hertz or even lower than that. That's infralow because the objective is to slow the brain and calm the brain down, massage away that dysregulation and help a person to feel better. But once we get past the dysregulatory state of the neocortex, we want to go into the more advanced neurofeedback training. Alpha theta is very good. In alpha theta, we actually have two reward frequencies. Alpha, which is 10 hertz, and theta, which is 7 hertz. Okay, and there's a little bit of variation depending on the person. By having the two reward frequencies simultaneously, you are training the brain to be in the alpha state, the awake and relaxed state, and in the theta state. Even though theta is a sleep frequency, you can master being in the theta state while you're awake. Now, the beautiful part about alpha theta is that you are processing repressed emotions because the mind is learning to be awake and access the subconscious mind at the same time. So you may feel an emotional release. You may shed a couple of tears while you're in alpha theta neurofeedback training. And you may not have specific memories. You're not going to have flashbacks or anything. It's in your subconscious mind. It's in your subconscious mind. And what you're doing is you're purging. You're purging your emotions. You're purging that negative emotions. And then the next time you go to your therapist or you go to your 12-step meeting or group or even if you're talking to friends, and you start talking about things that used to cause you a lot of pain, memories that used to cause you a lot of pain, you notice that it's a lot easier to talk about those things because you've already allowed that energy, that negative energy to purge itself from your subconscious mind during alpha theta training. All right. Yeah, it helps you to evolve. And a lot of people who are creative say that it's really help, it really helps them access their creativity myself included because by you know your your creative state is in your subconscious mind it's in the theta zone well one thing is too when, when you're under stress when you know and in under stress meaning you have more more cortisol catecholamines more pain stress hormones in your body because of things around you your environment you're tired you're worn out whatever it is too your body your mind won't be creative you no. need that serotonin that balance your body, as I mentioned before, too. So overall, your body can get to that creative state. Some people get it if when they're healthy from physical exercise. They That's get right. something, that, that endorphin release, too. They get to that point where now they can produce it when needed based on their activity. Some people will say, I, I work out. Afterwards, I have this epiphany, what I want to do. It gets to their mind. But when you're under stress, you lose that ability to be creative, to think be outside the box. And a lot of artists, uh, Salvador Dali comes to mind, would uh, do experiments where they would try to place themselves in the near sleep state and then force themselves to wake up because it's at that theta state that you can access your most creative, wow. your most creative mind. Well, wow. so it's yeah. controllable then too. Oh, yeah, very much. And once we get past alpha theta, we can go into gamma training, um, gamma synchrony neurofeedback. Synchrony neural feedback is where we're actually using uh, two amplifiers. Well, it's, a, it's a, 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 a double amplifier. We're using one channel on the left hemisphere, another channel on the right hemisphere, and we're training both hemispheres of the brain to work together. Now, you know, it, it seems like, well, your whole brain should work together, but no, the brain is very selective and certain tasks are primarily on your right brain and other tasks are primarily on your left brain. And there are certain things that you can learn to do. And while you're learning it, that process will be on the right. And once you know it, it'll move over to the left. I mean, there and, and vice versa, left to right as well. So um, when you're doing training, when you're doing synchrony training, you're actually getting into the peak performance mode. You're training your brain to actually work better. And um, if you're training in gamma, in the gamma state, it is incredible. 
because uh, the brain is moving very, very fast. The body is very, very calm. And once you master the high frequencies, all of the frequencies below it fall into place. Well, it makes sense to where once you, again, like anything, meditation, yoga, when you've done it enough and get to those different states, either on your own or if you need to with what we're doing here, a lot of it is allows your body to work and work critically thinking and working your brain without wearing your body down. Exactly. Students, for example, phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. To train your brain to do that, and by doing it through neurofeedback, it allows you to very quickly, versus having to do it on your own, where it may take a lot more time. Because exactly. you'll see, you'll see the graph, and the, the the computer will show you exactly where you are in which area, and you'll feel that. And over time, again, we regulate that better state, and maintain that better state over time. Yeah. I think God, maybe it's um, maybe I'm oh, mistaking no. stuff up. Absolutely. It has, absolutely. And, and, and basically the result is happiness. You, mm -hmm. you, you're, you're free from the, 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 the chains in your own mind that hold you back. You're free from feeling as though there, there is a time where you need a drink or you need a joint. And it's okay. There's no judgment, right? But I want you to be free. I want my clients to be free. And then you can enjoy these adult beverages and you can enjoy these things you know, the way they were intended to, not as a crutch or not as uh, uh, something you need in order to survive emotionally. I think everybody wants to be free and, you know, without, without having to, 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 to turn to something. And what I mentioned my patients too is, is once you get to a healthier state, you know what that feels like. And then at that point, oh yeah, I may have, I may have, I may indulge here, I may indulge here, but this is my new state. Right. How do I get there and stay my there with whatever normal. I can do it? My routine, my routine, my routine. How do I maintain my routine so I stay my new normal? That point I have homeostasis. That point my body can stay there and, and feel not long, not short-term effects emotionally, but also physically too. Everything, the whole body is affected by that. Everything. Now, how are you feeling now that you've Good. done the happiness? You can Good feel happiness, it now. and because I was excited before, more relaxed, more toward, more of a, in my sense, more of a healthier state. Wonderful. Now, uh, back to biomagnetism. You can hold on to this. Sure. Where am yeah, I? Can't see. Yeah, you Blinded can. with this thing. <laughs> Do not drive with this on, people. You get an accident, it's your fault. So let's say uh, a person has um, a virus, right? And that virus is residing in the colon. The virus is making the colon more acidic. And uh, that the body, your body, you can think of your body like a big bag of water. Okay, mm -hmm. so the body is going to try because your body is over 75, 80 percent water. So your body is going to try to maintain unit homeostasis. If there is a What's pocket, your homeostasis? what is that? Well, you, you, you're going to try to maintain an average pH of around 7.35, which okay. is which is the the healthy pH. Right. So if you have uh, for humans, uh, for, for the human body. So if you have an area of the body that is acidic, you very well may have a pocket of alkalinity and another reservoir somewhere else in the body. So in the case of HIV, for example, um, it, it, I know that's very controversial because the uh, modern medicine considers this to be uncurable. However, Dr. Goyes has found, uh, Dr. Isaac Goyes is the inventor of biomag uh, biomagnetic paratherapy. Um, he's found that if you use a very powerful positive magnet, which is this. This is a unipolar magnet. These are very powerful uh, magnets, okay? Um, very powerful. Uh, if you put a very powerful positive magnet on the thymus gland, which is bringing down... Where's the thymus gland? I can't see it. Right here in the center of the chest. Got it, okay. Okay, yep. uh, which will bring down it will cause acidity. It will bring down the pH of the E. coli bacteria. By being a bacteria, chances are it's going to be of a very high pH. It's going to be very alkaline. So we're going to bring that down with a positive magnet and simultaneously put a very powerful negative magnet, yes, under the butt, on the colon, okay, to affect the colon. That's where colon is, people, if you know where it is. It's yes, it's the, your butt. it's that hole, right? <laughs> yes. Um, this will help dislodge or what we call depolarize the relationship between the 
highly alkaline uh, bacteria, E. coli bacteria in the thymus gland, and the acidic, very low pH acidic virus in the colon. And if you leave it there, at this distance up from the equator, you want to leave it there for about a half an hour. What you're going to be doing is depolarizing that relationship and assisting the body in getting rid of both the virus and the bacteria. Well, if anything, if you consider bacteria and viruses, they they live and they survive in an acidic state, correct? Exactly. So by changing that state back to more of a basic or lower pH or lower pH, correct? Mm -hmm. State that point. Well, no, acidic would uh, would be low, so exactly. you want it to be a higher. Miss that one. So you want a higher pH over time, more of a basic environment. At that point, or al alkaline environment, is that the same yes. thing? Yes. Yes. Alkaline environment, alkaline environment. That point, that virus, that bacteria can't survive. It dies. Living, it's a living thing. It looks like a parasite, like a little caterpillar sometimes on a microscope. It dies, and where does it go afterwards? It comes out. It comes out of your stool. It comes out of your urine. It comes out in your sweat. Uh, you will have a detox reaction, okay? You're going to get a little detox headache. This is another reason why it's important to be very well hydrated when you undergo biomagnetic therapy. And you can see this, right? Put, a, put your hand up, like flat, or okay? Mine. Yep. You can see this. Still blind, people. Okay. Uh, but it falls, right? Yep. Okay. They're, they're strong, but not the strongest magnets I have. Yeah, you can still pull them apart. You can still pull them apart. These magnets. You want them on your body, you can't pull them apart. You're going to be stuck with them forever. <laughs> Don't do that. These magnets, I have these magnets wrapped in leather because they will actually fly across the room and break chips off of each other. Uh, now, put your hand up again. This is scary. Yes. Okay. I uh, see yeah. this. This actually will stick through you. Yeah. It'll stick through your flesh. These are the strongest magnets that I have. It doesn't hurt a lot. Mm -mm. But it's definitely, it's definitely you powerful. Pressure, yes. You feel the pressure. It'll stick through your flesh, okay? These are the magnets that we use for HIV. These are the magnets wow. that we use to get rid of hepatitis. These are the magnets that we use when we have very, very serious conditions that we're trying to depolarize. And, and, okay? we, and we know just from science from medicine, where these, where these organisms, where these viruses, bacteria live. So why not detoxify the liver, the kidneys, the colon? At that point, main areas that can cause those things long-term to cause you to have cancer, to have long-term problems also, correct? That's right. Yeah. And we can also find out where they are through the diagnostic procedure. The negative yes. side of a magnet okay. promotes circulation. So if we take the negative side of, side of a magnet and we place it on an area of the body that contains a pathogen. When we say pathogen, we mean virus, bacteria, fungus, parasite, or even a heavy metal toxin burden, right? The body is going to respond with tension. Now, this is what's interesting here. Why tension? Well, because uh, the, all a muscle can do is flex and, and, and relax. So it'll stress itself. So it'll stress itself, right? It, it, it's, it's, that, that's your body's way of saying yes to the affirmative, That's yes, your alarm system going something's off. wrong yeah. here. Exactly, yeah. I'm excited about this, right? Good. So, so uh, the, the heart, your heart is in the center, but primarily on the left side of your body. So the left side of your brain receives more blood and more circulation than the right. Everyone is this way. So the left side of your brain is slightly bigger. The left hemisphere of your brain is slightly more pronounced than the right hemisphere of your brain. Why is this important? The left side of the brain, left hemisphere of the brain, controls the right side of the body. The right hemisphere of the brain controls the left side of the body. So if I look on your body and place, let's just say you have E. coli, right? I don't, but if I if but if you did, yes. and I place this on your thymus mm -hmm. gland, your body is going to tense up. But because of the superior left hemisphere of the brain, the right side of the body is going to be affected more strongly. Uh, so if I look at the bottom of your feet, okay. your left leg, your right leg is going to appear to shorten compared to the left. So shorten, tighten, under stress. Because the body is under stress, that whole right side. Your femur is the longest bone in your body, and the thigh muscles are the longest muscle bellies in your body. So by, by looking at the bottom of your feet, right? Yep. When I find a pathogen, 
it's the right leg that's going to appear to shorten compared to the left. This is actually the result of um, the work of Dr. Richard Boringmeyer, uh, who gave all of his work to Dr. Goys, and Dr. Goys developed it in, into what we now call biomagnetic pair therapy. So it's very easy to find uh, you, where there are uh, uh, pathogens in your body by scanning your body with a negative pole of a magnet. And uh, when we find the problem, we have to find the alternative problem. For example, if I find, okay, well, he's got a problem on the thymus gland, okay? Well, chances are it's a bacteria. So even though I use the negative pole to find it, I'm gonna flip it around to the positive pole because if he's got E. coli, it's highly alkaline and the pH is actually too high and, and we're going to try to bring it down. So now we have to find where else on the body is there going to be the, 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 the alternative pathogen. For example, if the thymus gland is too alkaline, then somewhere else on the body is too acidic. Okay. And we can thank Dr. Isaac Goyes Duran for helping develop this, what we can call basically uh, like a physician's desk reference. And uh, I'm going to turn the camera just slightly. Well, that point, it shows you exactly where to put things. It, yes. It's very reliable. It's, it's scientific. Actually, yes. I, 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 I'm not really sure if I can divulge this information because this is from Dr. Goyce. But don't yes. Don't look, people. Don't look. <laughs> but yes, it is, it is like, a, like a PDR, like a yeah. physician's desk reference. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there are hundreds of pairs uh, throughout the body. So, you know, if we find uh, the, 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 the thymus is uh, too alkaline, then we can take and try to see where the red goes, where, I mean, where the black goes, where the, the negative uh, pole of the magnet goes in order to depolarize that relationship. Why would someone do this instead of taking medications like, their, like the medical doctor would tell them? Well, because the medication is going to poison your liver, mm -hmm. it's going to create a dependency, uh, it's going to cause all kind of other problems, and you weren't born with a prescription. Yeah, you God didn't born. make you that way. I mean, you know, you you you, you were born to be free and healthy, and uh, whatever put us here, put magnetism here on the earth for us, and and these are the energies that have been used by Native American tribes. Magnetic therapy is actually written about in the hieroglyphs in ancient Egypt. It's been around for. It's been around a long time. for as long as humans have been around. Yeah. Uh, it's just a matter of knowing where to place the magnets and how to use them. I uh, highly recommend, you Again, know. no side effects like medications. No. But you may think medications for, for example, diarrhea, and it causes this problem over there. They take medication for that and over here. So that, that dominant effect, you're avoiding that by doing one therapy instead of taking maybe one, two, three, four, five medications. Before I cleansed my body with chlorine dioxide, I was the kind of person, uh, uh, I guess we can call a mere mortal, who would actually get sick from time to time. Now I humans. don't get sick. Humans, yes. But uh, I did get sick once after purchasing my magnets, and uh, it was a pretty strong flu. And I recall I actually kicked it out of my body within 24 hours. Wow by just lying down in my bed and administering the magnets on myself wow. on the places that were suggested by Dr. Goyes uh, for getting rid of uh, getting rid of the flu. Wow, great. Yeah. Well, good. What else you got, sir? Well, that's about it, unless you want to try some biomagnetism. Well, and we tried it the last time too, we did it. Uh, right. A lot of it is, I think, is in to not wrap it up yet, but is how do you get yourself healthy in a non-invasive way Understand that your body needs to heal from physical and emotional injuries. I said I've done other 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 interviews too with natural doctors because a lot of it is people are tired of taking medications. They're tired of being pushed down that rabbit hole every time because it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Well, because of, of people not to pay wide a pocket for their health care, they go, okay, but instead of paying five hundred bucks over here for medication that's not working for me, what else can I do now? People are consumers, right? They want the best thing for their money. Part of what we're doing here is understanding how give, giving neurofeedback and biomagnetism a, a value, understand how it can help you versus doing something that is more medically based that we're used to since we're kids. We're all, most are born in hospitals. 
That's where we're raised through the medical route. Has that helped us? Yes, it's got, it's got us from being from sometimes very injured or very sick to a non-sick state. Not a healthier state, Just but a non-sick, non-sick state. Exactly. At that point, how could a healthier state and maintain that in our stressful lives? People live stressful lives. This is, this is 2000, was it 2019 now? Yes. It only gets faster, more competitive, and you have to drive more everywhere you want to go. There's, freaking, there's traffic everywhere. Yep. It doesn't matter what day it is now. So how do we fight that stressor as it improves by making our brains work, our bodies work? And by detoxing our body, our body can work more efficiently, keeping our brain from, from, from developing and removing those scars from our past so it can work better and more efficiently in our stressful environments. Yes. I did a talk yesterday uh, with kids from ROP and Upland here. And a lot of it was they come from different schools. They do a night class, which is wrong because they're doing the extra effort. Is how to understand is like right now in their, at their level, as you were maybe 15, 20 years ago, as we were with technology and with the pace of life 10 years ago, it's going to get faster and faster for them as you go from high school to college, medical oh, school, further, further, further. Can you get, can you get a healthier state now to handle that stressor at that point, not get to a sick state by staying, you're keeping your health here physically, mentally, psychologically, brain and body. We have to deal with a lot of stressors and, and we're in the information age. So we're inundated with information every day, all day, every day. We actually uh, experience information overload. Yep. And uh, I mean, we're all carrying around computers now. So you don't even have mine at home. So I have to go home. It's stressing me. I have to go home first before I go to work. <laughs> to get your, exactly. Yeah. I'm a we're, laptop. We're, we're carrying around our, our, our uh, obsession. <laughs> and, and, and that goes for kids as well as adults. Um, so we have to prepare yourself to survive in this world without, without chemicals, without drugs, without even pharmaceuticals. I did, I did a talk with a, uh, um, a child psychologist and the big concern right now is child suicide, kid suicide. Oh, that's so and, sad. And the link is kids spend about six hours a day on their phone. That's twice as much time that can change the brain to, to produce less serotonin, increase uh, kind of cholines and cortisol, the, the pain and stress receptors can make your body to a stress state, anxious state, depressive state, then suicidal state. It's terrible. And it can affect adult, uh, kids more because their brain's still growing, developing, but even adults too. So how do we counter that? By keeping a healthier state all the time, realizing what stressors are around us, because I can't see right now, but around <laughs> us to make our body, at that point, how do we, how do we interpret that properly? At that point, avoid or minimize that stressor that point become a healthier state so it can handle that that pressure, that stress. Absolutely. Can we take this off now? Absolutely. Thank yeah. you. I wouldn't be able to see see yeah. you and everybody else around me. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's phenomenal. This this therapy does help and, and overall, when you're in an abnormal state, yes. realize your body will cause problems. I have patients that have heart palpitations, they're medically they're fine, but their brain, their their serotonin reduction and their hormone imbalance is making their body want to become abnormal. And understanding the science behind that, you can get to a healthier state. It doesn't require medication because medications will become become dependent on them, like we talked about earlier. Yes. Your body will self-regulate. Medication becomes your dependence on for serotonin. Great, we're not producing anything through our body, through our thyme, through our I, I call it the adrenals, the adrenals ones, adrenal the glands, hormones, exactly. adrenal glands. But overall, your body starts producing, stop producing. That point, that point you require become dependent on that. Doing your own thing allows your body simply and living simply again too. As I get older, I don't need a lot of stuff. I don't need medication or things like that unless I have a health condition to keep my body healthy. I rely on my own food for the most part. What can I do? What how can you both simple healthy life or living a simple healthy life? That's all it is. That's all it is. I and mean, it, 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 I could not first at that point maintaining it on your own, but you can realizing you know, yeah, yeah. Then realizing okay, now I'm in a healthier state. How do I stay here? Right. When I'm off a little bit, I'll get some therapy, get back here again too. That's our jobs as health professionals to get you there, educate you why you're getting there, how you're getting there. And then from that point, maintain on your own when you realize that you're no longer naive, your own best doctor. But you know how to take care of yourself. You're your best health you, you, advocate. You know when you need a yep. bentonite clay bath. Exactly. You know, you you know, know where you are. Where you are. You know if you yeah. need to do a little DMSO. Actually, let me mention this too. Um, DMSO is dimethyl sulfoxide. It is a product of trees, and maybe this light is too bright. There we go. You show my guys real quick, too. My guys in the yes. sorry. <laughs> and uh, uh, we do have our own brand of DMSO here at the Biometrics Health yeah. Center. Um, it is a very powerful solvent, okay? 
Um, DMSO will cleanse the liver. Uh, you apply it actually to the bottom of your feet. Okay, so you just drip it onto your feet. If you have athlete's foot, it'll actually destroy the athlete's foot. Um, anything? Why? Oh, very sick. No, 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 no. This is very, very natural. It's a, it's a, it's yeah. a, it's it's a, a natural solvent. It's from trees. It's a tree, a tree sap, basically. Got it. And uh, it's such a powerful solvent that whatever you mix it with, whatever it binds with, it'll carry it through your skin into your bloodstream. For example, if I wanted to take a vitamin, I could actually crush the vitamin, put it on my skin, drip DMSO on it, and the vitamin will actually enter my bloodstream wow. through the skin. It actually also car uh, carries things across the blood-brain barrier as well. Uh, it's very good. It's a very good catalyst. A lot of athletes swear by it. If you look up DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide, on uh, YouTube, you're going to find videos from 60 Minutes, uh, the TV show from back in the 1970s, uh, back when um, the uh, football players, the NFL football players, would swear by it. They still use it. They just can't talk about it. A lot of times when you see the guys on the field yeah. that are injured and it looks like somebody's squirting water on it, they're not. They're squirting this. They're squirting DMSO yeah. on it. And you just rub it and it goes right in and it feels great. Uh, it's, 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 it's very good. You can put a few drops in water and mix it and, dry, and, and swallow it. Yep. Um, I, I really have to grab this one. And the biggest thing I think is, is, is when you're talking about up. what you're going to take, what are you gonna do for your body? How do you get your body yeah. to heal naturally from Pretty an injury? Well, actually, Again, football yeah, players from one too. Uh, a lot of it is gonna be how do you get yeah, your body to heal yeah, physically so and mentally. And having things like this, and I'll talk about a little bit more in detail, is allows your body to detoxify, get your body to heal from injuries from foods one yeah. too. This is almost like a panacea was talking about earlier to me too. At that point your body can heal. It doesn't sound here because well, you can't. But a lot of it is how do you get your body to deliver, understand how things you work in your body when it does heal properly uh, then you get uh, to, again tomorrow, we talked about before so to can, a healthier state and once you do that these can stay that way over time a lot of what we talked about yeah, today in my other podcasts do in my show even Deb Joe you, you got to watch yeah, Deb's yeah, videos I'll put a link in, yeah. in my show afterwards too he has we'll lots lots of videos he has a lot a lot of podcasts uh, put on videos uh, too with professionals yeah. that are much educated than he is had long experience in this stuff too to realize the science that we learn I did. Oh, okay. as I health because, professionals uh, is beyond what most yeah. people really need. They want the benefit, right? We all want to yeah, feel yeah, she, better she, she said, and stay better for ourselves, for our kids, for our family. By doing, by us understanding the information, we have confidence to put our own more. reputation on the line for these therapies, for these, these, sometimes we need to take something like this too, DMSO, at that point to give you, to give you the confidence that can actually help you. That's why we do the research. That's why we do our studies too. That point, we do the back end so we can help you with therapies that are reliable, mm -hmm. typically proven, can help your body heal, and then get see at a healthier state. And you learn how, from our mindset in a simple layman's terms, how to maintain on your own. Yes. Anything else, Devin, for your first show for the Crooked Spine Show and your plethora of shows? <laughs> no, actually, uh, stay healthy. Um, we're right down the street from yep. each other. Exactly. Uh, right here on Foothill and Mountain, and, and you're on Foothill and Foothill Euclid. Euclid. So yep. we're, we're, we're actually on the same street, just two, uh, uh, one major block apart from each other. And I'll put, I'm going to put all his information on from his show on mine, his addresses. Facebook is Instagram, Instabook, whatever's out there for one too. Yes. And a lot of it is too is how do you get healthy and stay healthy? Watch our videos, yes. Educate yourself, yes. And find out what therapy's gonna work for you that's non invasive, non side effects, allows your body to stay healthy in a natural state. All right. And you can call us at 909 608 2880. We're at 916 North Mountain Avenue, Suite D1. Upland, California, 91786. And you can find out more and see videos, uh, video testimonials from our clients at www.biomedrxhealthcenter.com. That's www.biomedrxhealthcenter.com. Take care of your health. Drink a lot of water. Okay, very huge. Drink a lot of water and uh, call us. That's it. Find out how it can help you and do a consultation with them. At that point, see, okay, do I need this? What's going on in my life? How can, I, how can you help me? 
consultations. That's all it is. Find out what's up with how to help you. All right. All right. Thank you, Devin. Thank you, Doctor. Thanks a lot. All right. See you next show. Thanks. Good deal. I'll be here. Thank you guys for joining. I really appreciate it. Uh, this is one of the best videos we've done. And uh, thanks to Lynette and Will, uh, Tiz, greatness. Uh, how you doing? Uh, Wendy, Tori, my cousin, Melissa. How you guys doing? Susan, Meredith, Clint, Maurice Morris, Karen Johnson Hall, Gaynell, all of you, I really appreciate your participation and uh, look forward for more videos. Please join us, uh, subscribe on Facebook, I mean on YouTube, uh, Biomed Rx TV and the Devin Lockett channel. And uh, we're gonna just keep cranking it out for you. Have a wonderful day, stay healthy. How's that content? <laughs>